Hey everybody, this is Pete. And in this video, I want to continue my series on tips and tricks and things I learned at Autodesk University 2022. And today I want to cover a tip I learned from Shannon Lundrigan's class, iLogic, Your Foundation for CPQ. And she used or statements in a select case. Uh, in iLogic, and I'd never tried that before. So I thought it could be tremendously useful when managing large groups of properties all at once. So let me just walk you through it. It's a relatively simple tip, but I think could be really useful. So here is my classic simple dimensional lumber, right? And so uh, we just have a list here of different types, and we'll kind of play with that in a second, but just different sizes of dimensional lumber. And so what I've got over here in the iLogic browser is this configuration rule. And of course, I've got uh, the sizes, like a thickness and a width. And dimensional number is super weird, right? A 2 by 4 is not actually 2 inches by 4 inches. Hence, I've also created that parameter size, which you saw me playing with. So every time I choose a different size from my list, it configures the actual different <clears throat> parameter values for those sizes. So pretty straightforward stuff, nothing crazy here. But this is where Shannon's tip comes in. What if there were properties that cross over between them? Say, where I buy the lumber. Well, I could add a parameter in every location here saying, hey, this is where I buy the, the lumber. But if I did all of these that you see here, maybe all these two by threes and all the way up to two by 12s, I can buy it like my local big box store, but I have a little bit more quality with these giant, you know, timber pieces at, at a more local resource. I, I might want to parse those out. So if I put a line in here for every single I property, it would absolutely work, but now I'd have lots of lines to edit. And what if I forgot one, blah, blah, blah. So I love Shannon's tip because I have a separate set of statements where it's again the same value, but by putting a comma in between each statement, I can actually group several of them together. So if I say edit two by three all the way up to two by 12, well, I can pick those up from Menard since I'm going to assign that to the vendor I property. But for some of these larger pieces of lumber, I'm going to, <laughs> I just had some fun with it. I'm gonna buy those from Big Redwoods Lumber Yard and throw that in the vendor I property. So go ahead and hit close. And I've already set this rule to run. And so what I, I can also do is, uh, yeah, well, actually, let's, now let's just try it out. So if I set this to 2 by 4, let's say 2 by 8, you can see it change. And then if we look at the I properties, it still says Menards. So even though I switch to a different value, it still says Menards, but if I go to one of those larger Yolumber sizes, say a four by four or a four by six, well, let's test a four by six first. You can see it now assigns it to Big Redwoods Lumber Yard. So it's a really useful tip uh, to be able to group things together. One warning I'll give you though, I had to separate them out because if I had the two by three by four by six, blah, 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 this statement, it would come to this one first if these were within the same select case. So you can't have the or statement and the individual case statements in the same select case rule. Otherwise, it's kind of whichever one it comes to first. So I did have to separate them out. But again, this is a little bit more efficient if I'm managing several properties among many different versions. So I hope you find this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know and have a blessed day.